The ANGRC9 uh, receiver and transmitter is a uh, early 50s uh, HF radio that was used probably from the 50s well up into the 70s. It's a picture for, from the field manual, and it uh, shows the radio with the uh, M38 in the field and in the CP. I just like that picture. He'll take the radio, put it on the bench, and uh, undo the five hasps on each side. That way you can remove the cover. And uh, one of the odd things about the radio is uh, you have to secure at least a couple of the hasps on both the receiver and the transmitter to make sure they don't fall out of the case because uh, that's the only thing that uh, holds the radio in the case. Flip it up. Do the connection to the uh, big power cable. It's 105 volts and 500 and 1.4 and 6 volts. I think those are the voltages it uses. I have an AC supply for running it on the bench. But there's also the uh, DC supply, which is the DY88, which is 6, 12, or 24 volts. It uses a vibrator for the receiver. And uh, then for the transmitter. It actually has the big black dynamo in it, which comes on when you see the transmitter. We'll go ahead and plug a speaker into it. The uh, receiver won't come on until something's plugged in a headphone jack. Switch it into standby, which is receive mode. Connect an antenna. And we're using the uh, whip input on 40 meters right now. We go ahead and key the transmitter and you can see the little red light that kind of you use for tuning it. What you do is you tune the radio for maximum bulb and it'll be a combination of the appropriate uh, output settings for selecting the type of antenna and the antenna trim control. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and actually look at the insides of the radio for a bit. Disconnect everything from it. Remove the key. Headphone. And power cable. Lay the radio down, undo the hasps that are holding the radio in place. And then the uh, modules will just pop right out of the radio. You have to be careful to disconnect the cables in the backs of the radio. You want to pull on the plug and not the cable. So there's the receiver. Remove the transmitter. And I'm going to take the cable out of the case at the same time so we can run the receiver and the transmitter on the bench by themselves outside of the case. Now it's important to remember that uh, without the case, the PA compartment is exposed and you cannot touch anything while the transmitter is on. Uh, there are potentially lethal voltages involved in the transmitter. So you really have to be careful if you operate it without the case on the radio. Go ahead and hook the big power cable back up.
plug the headphones back in and we applied power to it and like it says whenever the radio is in the send mode there is high voltage applied to everywhere in the PA compartment so you have to be extremely careful not to touch anything in that area We'll hook it to the signal generator. Put it in standby, which is receive mode. And that's what it looks like when it operates outside of the case. Let's go ahead and look at the transmitter more closely and you can see the back of the transmitter here, the PA and the voltage regulator tube. With the tube cover removed, you can see the oscillator, modulator and uh, doubler tube and also the spaces for crystals. And the slug tuned antenna tuning mechanism. Go ahead and turn it over. Remove all of the A screws on the back. There's four of them. And the back panel flips up and gives you some access to underneath. We'll remove the B screws now and that reveals the tuning capacitor and more of the under chassis. What I'm gonna do is uh, I wanna remove the tuning capacitor. So go to the front of the radio We'll unlock the knob. Remove the two screws that are holding the, lo the knob locking mechanism in place. Once they're out, you could take the whole thing as one piece and put it on the side. Flip it back over and remove the ground strap that goes to the capacitor. And then there's three black screws on the front of the radio that hold the tuning capacitor assembly in place. Once you remove those screws, we'll turn the radio back over. Then you can grab the entire tuning capacitor and the whole thing will lift out as one piece. It's got three or four plugs on the top that actually connect with the rest of the radio. Once that's out, you can see the band switching uh, assembly underneath the radio. And uh, on these, a lot of these really need to be cleaned a lot. So that's kind of an issue. Assembly is uh, just repeating what you did on disassembly. So we'll put the capacitor back in place. Reinstall the three black screws on the front of the radio. Now I always find it best to put the screws in just a little bit. Uh, not really tighten them. And after you get all three screws back in place, then you can go back and snug them down to hold the capacitor assembly in place. Once that's done and the ground strap is reattached, you can go ahead and put the knob back on the radio too. The uh, tuning shaft has a key, so it's pretty easy to make sure you get it in the right place. Now that that's done, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at, that, at the receiver. We'll start by taking the plug off the back. Remember, you pull the plug out, not pull it by the wires. And we'll remove the tube shield. There's four clips hold it down. Now 
And now you can see the inside of the receiver. In particular, what you're looking at in the center there is the uh, small bias battery in this radio. Those bias batteries are always bad. Inside of them, you can see there's three little cells, and that's uh, how they made that 4-volt bias battery originally. I've just taken stripped out insides of 9-volt batteries and rebuilt them that way, and then put it back in the radio, and now you have a bias supply. Another thing to look at is on the back of the receiver is an impedance switch for your audio output impedance. Always make sure that's in the right position. We'll turn the radio over, pull the screws out of the back of the bottom plate and the screws on the side of the bottom plate. Whole thing will lift up and snap out. And that will let you see the band switch in the receiver and the underside of the chassis. You see the two pots for the audio gain and the pot for the RF gain. These are open frame pots, which makes them a lot easier to clean. The band switch, though, to clean that, you really want to take like a Q-tip or something like that with cleaning material on it and go in there and try cleaning the individual wafers of the switch. You don't want to just spray it down with contact cleaner. So we'll go ahead and uh, try to use it out here on AM. First you net the receiver. Test, test, test. KA3EKH. Test, test, test. KA3EKH. It gives you an idea of what the uh, light looks like with modulation. Uh, 80 meters uh, is actually prefers using the doublet antenna with a 50 ohm load. Uh, so we have that set up, and I'm in the uh, novice sub band right now. So we'll just try tuning around a little bit down here on 80 meters. identify kind of like an open area there. What I'm going to do is put it in net. Tune the transmitter to the same frequency as the receiver. Go back to CW mode. Put the radio in send. We'll go ahead and tune it for maximum output. Or in this case, maximum light bulb. And that's the GRC9.